Welcome everyone to this table topic contest called Sharpen the Saw. But what is Toastmaster? Toastmaster is an international, is a nonprofit educational organization that teaches public speaking and leadership skills through a worldwide network of clubs. Headquarter is in Englewood, Colorado. The organization's membership is approximate, approximately, sorry by my English, for my English, is 280,000 and more than 40,700 clubs in 144 countries. Since 1924, Toastmaster International has helped people who diverse backgrounds become, become more confident as speakers, communicators, and leaders. Now, as you know, during the, se during the session, that you please put your cameras on, your microphone off, and we clap like this always. Also, uh, in, uh, I inform you that the session will be recorded. Now, I want to introduce you to our Toastmaster of this session, Billy Ameka. Ameka. He is DTM from the Maurice Hellman Club in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Billy, go for it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Margarita, and welcome everyone. We are officially opening the session, and I just want to give a warm greeting to everyone here, everyone who's participating, the contestants, and our wonderful guests as well. Is everyone ready to go? Because the contest is just about to begin. What I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce Margarita Vas Velasquez. She is from El Salvador, Central America and has been a member of the LATAM Panama Club since May of this year. She is the VPE, Vice President of Education of her club, and she is the contest organizer. There's a lot of work that goes into putting this contest together. So let's hear it for uh, Margarita. Thank you very much, Billy. Hello again. I don't want to take uh, much time here, but I want to say hello. And thank you to each and to each one and every one of you to being here with us today. We are very, very happy to welcome you. Today we celebrate the end of a week with a lot of learning and a couple of weeks of a lot of work. Before we begin, I would like to express my sincere thanks to everyone who helped us and helped me to bring this event together to become a success. Contestant, judge, scrutineers, timekeepers, Toastmaster, chief judge, education speakers, I don't know, everyone. The countries that made their own contents to be able to have rep representatives content stands today. So we couldn't, we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Billy. You're welcome. Thank you, Margarita. Again, we're really excited about this contest. Next, what I'd like to do is introduce a guest speaker. Um, the speaker is going to be giving us an educational talk and the topic is success doesn't happen in one day. Our speaker is Mauricio Lopez. He is an entrepreneur, an e-learning specialist and the current VP Vice President of Public Relations for the Guadalajara Club, GAM Club. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Mauricio. Hello, everyone. Um, so, sharpen that saw, everyone. Life is a combination of like the minutes, the hours, and the days that we all have. And it's really about trying to always continuously improve. All of you have the option to sit here and to kind of relax, watch Netflix, and really not do much with your life. But then we also have the option to get out there and try to improve ourselves. During this week, we have been talking about some really great habits and different ideas that we can do. Sharpening that saw is about taking and really appreciating everything that you have. The good news is that if you're here with me right now, all of you, 43 people that are connected today, 
just being here tells me that you're one of those extraordinary people who understands that being extraordinary is just doing a little bit more than everyone who is ordinary. I still remember being 16 years old and thinking about all of these different mindsets, you know, the idea of taking care of my physical self, taking care of my mental self, taking care of uh, my social and spiritual ideas. And I know and I hope today that you guys can come with me and reminisce throughout these times because we're going to go back and back and then we're going to go to the present and then towards the future. That's the goal. So I remember being 16 and I remember wearing, really worrying about being physically healthy. And I remember I would go to the gym and I would do so much exercise. My job at the time was great for me, maybe not so great for all of you. I, from 5 to 10 p.m., I would be stuck in a container, filling it with boxes, working for UPS, and it was hard. But what happened? After I stopped that job, I graduated from college, the willpower that I had to continue to work on my physical self was gone. It was hard. It was kind of like something that I had in my hands and just disappeared. And I hope you guys can relate with that idea. So, when you're improving yourself, it's about trying to hack your mind and trying to find a way that you can kind of find something that works for you. In my case, because I tried the push-up challenge where I was doing 100 push-ups a day, I tried the pull-up challenge where I was doing, I, at the time I could only do like three pull-ups a day, but I worked on it. I found that for me, having a trainer was the best option. I found that I was the one who chose the food that came into my house. So I was able to limit all of those things that we're not supposed to be eating at the supermarket. I mean, just a minute ago, the girls in the line at the supermarket were talking about chocolate for 20 minutes, like asking about what they wanted. And I was like, I had to tell them, it's like, no, don't do it. Don't buy it. We need to reflect on ourselves to be able to improve. All of us have that energy matrix that is very much associated with this today. Eat right, sleep right, and exercise. If you do that, you can fail at everything and still succeed. So that's the physical part of my life. And I want to motivate you guys to try that. When we go into the spiritual ideas, it's about reflecting everyone. I had the chance to go to this big building a couple of months ago. And there was a security guard there that had worked there for 20 years. And I asked him about a couple of different people and businesses that were in the building. He had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. 20 something years working in this place. So I learned that when we're growing mentally, we don't necessarily learn anything from experience. You learn from that experience when you stop afterwards and you reflect on it. And that's kind of one of the things I want my call to action for you guys today. Try to reflect on the different kinds of things that you do. Try to identify those bad things, maybe procrastination. It, I don't know, do we suffer from dread, from resentment, from all of these negative things? And try to be prepared when that, those things happen. Try to rely on your principles. I'm not sure if all of you here could answer that question and tell me exactly what your principles are. Do we know, in my case, it's hungry, humble, smart. I try to be curious, creative, and caring. And I try to take these ideas to everything that I do. All of these kinds of concepts where you're reflecting on what you're doing, when you're working on yourself and on everything that you have is the basics of what I want to say today. Sharpening your saw is about thinking of the growth mindset. I'm not sure if you guys have ever read the book Mindset but I really, really recommend it. It's one of my favorite books. It talks about differentiating people in between people with a growth mindset and people with a fixed mindset. For today, this chat is about thinking of yourselves as a growth mindset, where problems lead to opportunities, where you can learn anything that you set your mind to, where you are open to grow and that kind of ideas. Then we need to look at what we're good at, what we identified. So we already went through our physical, we went through our spiritual, we went through our mental. With the social sections, 
When was the last time you guys called one of your friends? When was the last time you, you, you did, made an effort to kind of contact somebody you haven't talked to in a while? You know, you have the chance to call them, have some coffee, and really have those connections. With the social, you have to also be very careful with a certain cancer that we have today in our organizations, in our lives. The cancer is busyness. When was the last time you kind of stopped for a moment and just took it easy and tried to understand and really comprehend what was happening? All of these kinds of things, the sum of all of our physical, our spiritual, our mental, and our social combinations should take you to continue to improve in life. I want to tell you a little story about my life. I, every year, year let's say right now, I can reflect on who I was a year ago. And I am really confident in saying that a year ago, I did not know anything. And I really was lacking a lot of the different things that we need today to be able to sharpen that saw and grow. The interesting thing is I've been able to say that exact same thing for the last 20 years. Because every single year, I'm always sharpening. I'm always growing. I'm always learning. I'm always reading. I'm always open. My glass is always empty to each one of these kinds of situations. Why empty? Because when your glass is empty, you can fill it. You can listen to all of the people around you and you can learn. So think about it. Try to grow as a person. Try to take in everything that we have for today and let everyone here fill your glass. Fantastic speech. Well, thank you so much for that inspirational speech. I know that we're all going to reflect over the next couple of days on what you've said and potentially reach out to members, friends that we've previously been connected with and are no longer connected with. Again, that's just such a valuable lesson that we can reconnect with people that we knew in the past. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to introduce our chief judge. Our chief judge for today's contest is Monica Acevedo. Um, she has been a member of the Bogota um, Destinito, you can tell I'm not a Spanish speaker, Excelencia Club. She has been president, vice president of education, VP of membership for her club, and has, she has been an active member of the Latin America Leaders Table since the inception last year. Everyone, please give a nice round of applause for Monica. Thank you, Billy, very much. I'm this uh, afternoon, I'm going to be the chief judge. And I want to mention that the code of ethics of our contestants has been read, and they know very well. They have all passed the eligibility process and they are able to participate in this contest. It's also worth to mention that the presentation on the contest must be on their own. It must be original. It should be a maximum 25% of paraphrase or cite any contribution from others, quote, order, or any other particular reference. I wish you success. And I, I wish you have a pleasant experience in this contest. Thank you very much. Fantastic job. Thank you so much. Again, there's so much work that gets involved in this. It's not just like we begin and it starts. There's a lot of organization. There are a lot of people involved and your role is definitely appreciated. Next, I'd like to ask um, Shemena Rojas, to help explain what's going to happen with the timing and the traffic lights and everything else. Shemena, please take yourself off mute. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thank you. Uh, I'll be your timer today and I'll be showing the green car at one minute. I'll be showing the yellow car at one minute and 30 seconds. And I will be showing the red card at two minutes. The red card will stay there. 
until the speaker ends. Afterwards, uh, we will go back to my uh, neutral screen and then I will be timing one minute for the judges to do their evaluation. Any questions? Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Shemena. Wonderful job explaining it, and that is a vital role. So we really appreciate your help taking on that role. Next, what we'd like to do is we'd like to identify the order of the speakers. And I'm going to ask Margarita to help me out here. And we're going to determine how or the order that the speakers will be presented today. Margarita? Okay, we have here all the names. Um, we are going to pick by one by one, and Billy. The, uh, after that, you have to read the order of participants. Margarita, sorry, there is two times James Plunkett. You maybe the second yes. one could be Maria Antonita Alfaro. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Now we can start. Bruno Amadori. María Antonieta. Bárbara Rojas. David Ross. James Blunkett. And the last contestant is going to be Alejandro Navea. Fantastic job. Thank you so much, Margarita. So what I'm going to do now is explain what's going to happen next. So we're going to ask all of the contestants to go into a separate room, except for the first one, Bruno, because he's going to be our first contestant. And then one by one, I'm going to call them out according to their positions that were just identified. Once they enter in the main room, we'll make sure that there are microphone is working and that they can see the timer and then we'll present the question or the prompt to them they will be able to respond to the prompt according to the time limit and then once they're done we're going to give the judges one minute of silence this will give the judges enough time for them to make some notes about what that speaker said so that they can evaluate the six different speakers after that, what we'll do is we'll ask the sergeant at arms to get the next speaker from that breakout room. That first speaker can stay there because they've already heard the question. But the reason we have all of the speakers go into that breakout room is because we don't want them to hear that question until they're there to represent or to give their response to it. So what I'd like to do now is ask the sergeant at arms to escort all of the contestants other than Bruno to a separate breakout room. Okay, in this moment. 
Excellent. And when you're done, just please let me know. Okay, I'm invited to the room, but I will... Don't, don't, ask, don't, no. don't accept. Yeah. Not now. Excellent. Great. And table topics is really such an important part of Toastmasters. It allows us to develop these skills because throughout the day, whether you're meeting someone for the first time or whether you're at work and your boss surprises you to add, give an update, you need to be able to speak off the cuff and be able to respond to a question without being prepared. So this gives us the ability to practice that. And the more we practice, the easier it becomes. So it's always a little challenging and fun. And I think it's one of the, the most exciting parts of the meeting. Now everybody is now in the in the room. Fantastic. But Bruno Amadori. Excellent. Fantastic. So now I'm going to ask Bruno to select a number between one and four. We've identified four different questions or prompts. So Bruno's going to pick a number between one and four. And then whatever number he picks, that's going to be the prompt not only for Bruno but it'll be the prompt for every contestant afterwards. So Bruno, just give me what number from one to four? One. One. Number Perfect. one. And before we begin, before we even show the question, I want to make sure, Bruno, can you see the timer? Can you see the timer? Yes, you perfectly. see the timer clearly. Excellent. Oh, and, great. Very and clean. I can hear you. Thanks. Fantastic. Great. So what I'd ask right now is, and. Your time begins either when you start speaking or you make a noticeable movement. Like if you make a big hand movement or something else, that is when the clock begins. <laughs> Again, you have one to two minutes. At the one minute mark, you're gonna see the green light display. At the one and a half minute, you're gonna see the yellow light. At the two minutes, you're gonna see the red light. And then you just have um, 30 seconds to wrap up. And after that, we won't change it. As soon as you see the red, it's going to stay red until you're done. If you go over the time limit or if you go under the time limit, you are disqualified. Cool. Yeah. Ready to begin, Bruno? Yes, yes, ready. Ready to Great. go. Let us see the question. Number one, right? Number one. Bruno Amadori. If it depends upon, if it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? If it depends on you, that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself, Bruno Amadori? One of the wisest men in Greece said that to be wise is to really identify what's in your control and what's not in your control. This man was Epicuro. I don't know in English how to say it. Epicuro, Epicuro. And that's something I really try to take for myself and I really try to apply it. And in this case, when we speak about toxic relationships, which are things that happen to us in some way. We don't choose to have a toxic relationship. It's something that just happens. Um, there are things that are not in our control, like what the other person does, in example. But there are other things that, of course, are in our control, like 
what I'm doing about this, how I'm seeing this thing, what I'm letting happen to me in this relationship or what I'm doing to the other person. So yes, yes, I think it's a very good question. It's very good to contemplate on this and to see what I'm doing right now in this toxic relationship, which I see myself as toxic because maybe it's not toxic for the other person. Maybe it's toxic for me. What I'm doing, why I'm seeing this like this. So what I usually do is first check my actions. Okay, maybe I'm doing something. This is something I'm doing with my body. Maybe it's something I'm saying, maybe it's something I'm not doing. That's the first thing, the level of actions. The second level is the level of perception, how I'm seeing this thing. Maybe I'm judging her, if it's case is a woman, no? Or maybe I'm judging him. And probably the third level is the level of inspiration. Maybe it's something that I don't have control and I had to get out of the box. Isn't it something, sometimes that's the way to just resolve the problem. So this is my take about how to resolve something like a toxic relationship. Thank you so much. Contest Master, up to you. Thank you, Bruno. Please put yourself back on mute. Yes. And can we have one minute of silence, Shimena? And can you just indicate when that one minute is over? That minute of silence is for the judges to note some comments and notes about Bruno's speech. Maria Antonieta, are you here? We're just giving the judges a minute of no. silence. Maria Antonieta is in the breakout room, but she says that she sees the others who are in the breakout room, but it seems that no one sees her. Is there any problem? Yeah, no, everything is good. Um, uh, okay. Antonia <laughs> is the next person on the list. Okay. So she's going to be the next speaker. So the sergeant at arms brought her out while we were in that moment of silence. So thank you for doing that. And Antonia will be beginning in one minute or less. Shemena, just let us know when that minute is up. Uh, yes, it was up already. Fantastic. Great. So Maria Antonia Alfara, can you hear us loud and clearly? We can't hear you. Maria, can you hear us? Please take yourself off mute. Maybe are your microphone, if you see the little microphone and uh, down in the Zoom, you can select a microphone and select many microphones. It's a second option. Hello. Hey, yes. Maria. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can hear Hello? you. Can you hear me? Okay. Great. Loud and clearly. Thank you. <laughs> this sex thing, it was yes. all fine until we went to the breakup room. And then <laughs> suddenly I could listen to them. I could see them, but they could not listen to me. And I tried here and there. Like, finally, this seems to have to save me. Thank you, Margarita, for leading me through five other options. So it's always a learning process and a challenge. Especially for some of us when it comes to the tech issues, but whoo, here we are. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm going to ask everyone to please, other than um, uh, Maria and Tony, Anton, Tonya, please check to make sure that you are on mute, because the last thing we want you to do is cough in the middle of her responding or make some noise or anything else. Excellent. Uh, Maria, can you see the timer? Can you see the timer? And the timer, please show the green, the yellow, and the red. Maria, were you able to see them? 
Yes, I can see. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention your name. I will mention the title um, or the prompt twice and then your name, and then you can begin. You begin with your first word or your first movement. Great. Can we see that prompt once again on the screen? Margarita, can you show the prompt on the screen? Did we lose Margarita? Um, hang on for one second. Can we see if someone can get in touch with Margarita? Because I want to make sure that it's if the other person was able to see it, that she'll be able to see it. She's. I can see the chronometer. Okay. Margarita, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you display the prompt on the screen again? Oh, okay. Just let me, one minute. And back to you, Maria, can you hear us loud and clear and your, your microphone is working, correct? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Great. I, I sent you the question in the chat. Okay, great. Yep, I, we can just read the question then. Yeah, perfect. Please. Sure. Maria Antoinetta Alfaro. If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? Maria Antoinetta Alfaro. What could I change in myself? Probably come to my mind on a couple of things. One, to develop more patience. And that's the challenge for some. Sometimes we want things for yesterday and not for today, or we kind of want things to speed up. But everything has a process, and we need to, you know, take a um, focus on that and develop this skill of patience, in, in my case. Another um, thing is, of course, to be more loving and love as well, because we have two hands, one to receive and one to give. So it's important that in a relationship, in order for it to succeed, that we learn to love unconditionally and also receive unconditional uh, love. But more so, we have to learn to love our own self, accept who we are, how we are, and be willing to sharpen the saw, to work on our own self, to work on further developing our skill, our ability to take care of ourselves in order to be able to take care of others. So it is important to develop patience, to develop love, respect, and it starts with one itself. Like the oxygen you have to put it on you before you can help and put it on others. So we need to take responsibility of our own self. And keep in mind that we have two hands, one to receive, one to give, but we have to do it you know, with love, first for us and then for others. Back to you. Great, thank you very much, Maria. Please put yourself on mute as you did. Again, Tommy, can we have one minute of silence and the Sergeant at Arms, can you please get the next contestant out of the breakout room, who is Barbara Rojas?
Toastmaster time is up. Excellent. Fantastic. I want to see Barbara, are you here? Barbara, if you're here, can you please take yourself off mute and say hi? Okay, just let me a minute. Barbara? Just okay. uh, one minute. She sure. has to accept the invitation to Maine. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Okay, now we have Barbara here. Barbara, can you hear us? Please take Hi. yourself off mute. Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Barbara, can you see the timer? Timer, please change your colors. Green, yellow, and red. Barbara, can you see the timer? Yes, I can see the timer. Fantastic. So I'm going to read your name. I'll read the prompt twice and then your name. The time starts when you make a significant move or begin speaking. The prompt, uh, Barbara Rojas. If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? Barbara Rojas. When someone is in a relationship, it usually happens that it's pointing the, the finger to one's one and the other. But the things that I have learned throughout life is that it's not one or the other. It's usually both. But if I had to do it from myself, from within me, it will be how I communicate to that person so that they understand me. Communication is key. We know here as Toastmasters, how to communicate correctly is critical so that other people hear your ideas and if it's a partner, your emotions. So I will use all those communication skills that I have gathered throughout the years to get them understand what is happening. And if that's have the chance to cut that relationship. If it's toxic, it has to be cut because it's not good. If it's poisoning you and it's hurting for both sides, it's not good. And it takes two, sadly. And it can be from me that I'm not communicating correctly or from them that the way they're communicating or they're acting can be really hurtful. So that's what I have to do. Using what powers I have as a communicator to say, stop, and until here, it ends. Thank you, Barbara. Please put yourself on mute. And then timer, can we please have one minute? Everyone, it's one minute of silence. And the sergeant at arms, please ask David Ross to join us in the main room. David, we're still under the one minute of silence. We'll begin as soon as the timer lets us know. Toastmaster, time is up. Great, thank you so much. One minute can seem like an eternity when you have to be silent. At least it felt like that for me. David, please take yourself off mute and please say something so we can make sure we can hear you. Hello, good evening, everyone. 
Fantastic, David. Great. And I want you to identify the timer. The timer will change the screen colors to green, yellow, and red. Can you see the timer screen changing from green, yellow, yes, and red? Yes, I see the timer screen changing. Fantastic. So we're going to begin. I'm going to say your name, and I'm going to say the prompt twice, and then your name. The first time you speak or make a significant movement, the clock will begin. Thank you. David Ross, if it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? David Ross. Thank you very much for the question. Good afternoon, everyone. I feel that if it depends on me that the toxic relationship changes, I feel that I should change my perspective. I might want to keep in mind one of the seven habits of highly effective people, uh, which is habit number one, be proactive. Uh, being proactive is about taking the initiative, taking responsibility for what happens, taking a serious look at what happens and thinking about, can you view it in a better way or can you handle it in a better way? I'll share a quick joke about little Johnny. Members of my Toastmasters Bogota English Club heard me tell some little Johnny jokes. So little Johnny one day was in his classroom and the teacher was giving out report cards. Little Johnny's report card had a big fat red F. Little Johnny was failing. So little Johnny said to his teacher, if I were you, I would change this while you still can. And the teacher said, why is that? Little Johnny replied, because my dad said, if he saw one more failing report card, somebody was gonna get a beating. See, little Johnny did not take responsibility. So I feel that sometimes we face challenges because we look at things in a one-sided way. We're not thinking about what the other person is going through or what the other person experiences or what the other person experienced. Another habit of highly effective people is to seek first to understand before you try to be understood. I would therefore try to understand the other person before I want them to understand me. That's very important and it's not easy to do because sometimes we're in a hurry to make sure the other person understands us. Toastmasters, I feel that we should keep the rules of highly effective people in mind and apply it to our friendships and our relationships, whether it's personal or work relationships, and we can really, really benefit from that. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, David. Please put yourself on mute as you did. Timer, can we have one minute? Everyone, please keep your silence. And Sergeant at Arms, please bring James Plunkett from the breakout room. James, we're in the one minute of silence. I'll let you know what, the time will let us know when the minute's over. Those master time is up. Fantastic. James, please take yourself off mute and say something so we can make sure you can we can hear you. Okay. How are you, everybody? Can you hear me properly? I'm sitting loud and clear. Loud and clear. Wonderful. Okay. Excellent. James, can you see the timer? And the timer is going to change the screen from green to yellow to red. Well, I can see it's covering the whole screen right now. Yeah. Fantastic. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say your name. I'm going to say the prompt twice. And I'm going to say your name again. And your time will begin as soon as you say something or make a significant movement. James Plunkett. If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, 
what could you change in yourself? If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? James Plunkett. There's nothing like being on the good side of somebody. In fact, even everybody, because you only get frustrated by continuing to be toxic. So what you have to do is really sit down someday and talk to yourself. Say, listen, people are reacting to me in a way that I just don't like it. I, I really feel very uncomfortable with this thing. So I've got to do something. It's, it's about time because it's been going on now for quite a while. So I really kind of did a little meditation. Can you believe it? Do I look like a meditator? Probably not. But it really worked. And I really went into a kind of a, another world and relaxed. And I said to myself, hey, come on now. Be positive. Don't be negative because this will go against you constantly. And I'll be darned, it wasn't too long before I realized that just by relaxing and smiling, no, a little smile doesn't hurt anything. And then people start saying, hey, this guy is really different now. He's changed. He has really come around a long way. So, well, so I naturally felt relieved. I felt satisfied that finally people were getting to like me better. I was getting along with people and I just couldn't believe it. And it went on and on and on. And now look at me, I'm a Toastmaster. Can you believe it? And thousands of people, well, hundreds, okay. Hundreds sit there and just listen to my speeches and I go on and Every, hey, that was a great speech, Jim, wonderful. That was so good. So you can see it pays to get rid of the toxicity. Mr. Topic Leader, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, James. Please put yourself on mute. And I will ask the timer to give us one minute and also ask the Sergeant at Arms to bring Alejandro out of the breakout room. Alejandro, we're just Toastmaster, time is up. Perfect. Alejandro, please take yourself off of mute and state your name so we can make sure your microphone's working. Hello, my name is Alejandro Navias from Chile. Excellent. Thank you, Alejandro. Alejandro, can you see the timer screen? It's going to go from green to yellow to red. Can you see it clearly? I can I can see the, 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 the timer. Yeah. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention your name, the prompt two times, and then your name. And the time will start when either you start speaking or make a significant move. Alejandro Neveas. The prompt is, if it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? If it depends on you that this toxic relationship improves, what could you change in yourself? Alejandro Naveas. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Um, I imagine this is a significant signal so that I can tell you that I have started. Well, let me quote perhaps Mauricio and his, his talk when he was talking about self, okay? He was saying self, you have to protect yourself, you have to take care of yourself in order to improve, okay? Which I really loved. Because self has to do with, you know, your own domains, your own identity. So if you happen to have some kind of toxic personality, or if you happen to be kind of, you know, let's say different from what other people are, okay? Or if you happen to have a, a bad relationship with somebody, the first thing you have to do is, you have to think of who you are, what you are, what you want, what you have, what you can do and what you can't do. In other words, once again, it's you, right? It's self. So back to self. So continuous improvement to me has to do with, as Manuel Mauricio uh, suggested, uh, you have to think of you and what it is that you have. And let me use at the same time something that I have as my own motto. Um, I think that I am always learning from other people, right? And I'm always... This is one of my new and my recent learnings. I'm trying not to judge people from what they say, from what they 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 they, they dress, for from what they think. So I usually try to think of them in the light of what they are and what they have. So in order to improve the relationship, I will start by listening to others, learning so that I can improve self. But once again, self. Thank you. Billy, we can't hear you, I think. Thank you. I was on mute. Judges, please make notes on Alejandro's speech. Can we have one minute of silence? And Primer, please let us know when that one minute is up. Toastmaster, time is up. Great. Now I'm going to ask the judges to update their ballots and to calculate who they're recommending the winners are. So, timer, I will need five additional minutes of silence. This is a good time for everyone to practice some deep breathing, just to relax and enjoy it. But it's super important that we give the timers sufficient time, or the, the um, uh, judges sufficient time to determine who they're recommending as first, second, and third place. So timer, five minutes, please. Everyone just take a deep breath and relax.
Toastmaster time is up. Great. Thank you very much. I felt like we were all in some deep meditation during that five minutes. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to invite the uh, tally keepers, the tellers, another word for them, and the chief judge to enter into a counting breakout room. So this is where they'll be determining who came in first, second, and third place. And what I'm going to do is one by one, bring up the contestants and have a little chat with them. We will do it in the same order as we, as they spoke during the contest. So our first contestant will be Bruno. So Bruno, can you please take yourself off mute? Of course, I'm mute. Excellent. Bruno, how are you? Great, really enjoying. It was so great to hear all the contestants. Um, I already learned a lot. So, I so in one minute, can you, or one minute more or less, can you tell us what club you represent and then what your phrase or important phrase means means to you? <laughs> I, I didn't know you would use that in this way. Uh, well, I am part of the um, Morris Gaman Club, which is the name of the club uh, we have here on Argentina. And I'm part of this club since I think one month or something like that. So for me, this is very new and it's amazing. And thank you so much for letting me be here. And the word you wanted an explanation of Memento Mori. And yes, Memento Mori, it, it means Memento, it's a word related to remembering. And Mori is a word related to death. So it's about remembering your death or taking uh, in account that you are a mortal being. And so this far away from being something depressive is something to empower yourself and to really use your time in a proper way. I mean, uh, that's like the outcome of this uh, psychotechnology <laughs> of Memento Mori. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Bruno, and good luck to you. Thank you. Great. Please put yourself back on mute and Maria Antoinetta, please take yourself off of mute. Yes. And Maria, please tell us what club you represent and then tell us about your favorite quote or one of your favorite quotes. Sure. I belong to the Lima Toastmasters in Lima, Peru. And it's a club that's been around for quite a few years to celebrate an important anniversary. And my quote, which is actually appropriate for today is get up and write. That's the phrase and with that I mean, it's a phrase that I heard actually yelling, you know, get up and write from my father, my best mentor. Well, while he was teaching me, he was teaching me to ride the bicycle. And for the first time, let me go. I, of course, the fall and he could hear from afar, get up and write. So those words of encouragement are very appropriate for me again to remember today. <laughs> <laughs> what happened you know it always anything can happen and my intention today was like oh no everything was fine as we went to the breakout room and Sally and like oops I they cannot listen to me and they you know I could see them talking and you know it, it, speaking with each other I could see but they couldn't hear me and I realized oops I'm in trouble <laughs> so when I got in, and I have to say, you know, very honestly, when I got in into the room, I got very like, oh, you know, barely made it. Like my heart is agitated. My mind is thinking, oh, am I going to make it or not? And suddenly I wish I had, you know, uh, remember your advice to breathe. There was some time to breathe and relax. And boom, the question was out there. And my mind was not kind of, you know, if you don't breathe, properly your you know your system doesn't work quite well your thoughts are not you know you're not alive so i know i you know i i, I could do it better um so i take this as a great experience again as those master and as person and then you know personal professional will always have something to learn so i need to learn to let go of a control more so because it seems that that makes me uncomfortable probably more than speaking itself that not knowing no no not knowing what's going to happen so there's my learning you know my lesson for for today and of course that applies because i will you know be uh, participating 
in um uh, you know in other activities especially in other contexts of of uh, topic section and i won't let the meditation get into until that moment so i hope so i hope so so Excellent. there's always you know something to learn i am learning something today thank you thanks to all the organizers and thanks to for leading this session fantastic thank you uh, maria and good luck to you please put yourself back on mute and barbara please take yourself off of mute and then barbara can you tell us about what club you represent and also um one of your favorite quotes well, uh, I am from, I'm Barbara Rojas, and I am from Viña dos Masters Club in Chile. And well, the quote I had I choose is actually one quote that is from Ralph Smedley, the founder of Toastmaster International. And why I choose that quote? And it's because it's a quote that I used recently in one of my speeches. And it caught my attention because what well, my speech was about a uh, living and leading a team and that's something that's really important and also that we kind of learn here in those masters and why it caught my attention is because it has a bit of true like people are willing to follow a leader who knows where he's going and that's important because the job of a leader is to lead but the point i made in, in that speech is that sometimes in a team even that the leader might be lost or maybe like feel lost or have trouble living and in those situations you have to get up to the task and be the leader or even then a team can be full of leaders and you can see like ourselves uh, we are around we're surrounded by leaders uh, in one way or another so that that's what the code uh, get me to thinking like in a team anyone or everyone can be a leader. So that's why I choose that. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much and good luck to you, Barbara. Please put yourself on mute and David, please take yourself off of mute. And David, tell us about what club you represent and your quote, please. Sure. Hello again, everyone. I'm part of the Toastmasters Bogota English Club. Uh, Toastmasters Bogota actually has a club that meets in Spanish on Wednesday and a club that meets in English on Tuesdays. And as I am from the you know, United States, <laughs> Spanish is not my first language. <laughs> I've joined the English club. And it's interesting because it ties into my favorite quote, right? One of my favorite quotes is, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I, I feel sometimes it's good to have a plan because even if your plan doesn't succeed, it could be interesting. It could lead to interesting experiences that are helpful. So for example, I joined Toastmasters to help me with public speaking so that whenever I'm doing a presentation or if I'm talking about a book or whatever, I felt that it would benefit me. And when I joined Toastmasters, this was before I thought about moving to Colombia. Right now I'm living in Cali, Colombia. Uh, but fortunately, because I was part of Toastmasters, I joined Toastmasters like six years ago. When I was looking for things to do in Colombia, I saw Toastmasters Bogota English Club. I'm like, oh, wow, there's a Toastmasters Club in Bogota. And not only that, they meet in English and they meet online. So <laughs> for me, it was a no-brainer. So joining Toastmasters was part of the plan and it had an unexpected benefit. That's one of the reasons I feel that it's good to have a plan because the plan could have unexpected benefits. Excellent. Thank you so much and good luck to you, David. Please put yourself back on mute. And James, please take yourself off of mute. Tell us what club you represent and about your favorite quote. I represent Lima Toastmasters 3098U. It's a club that's about 62 years old. I've been a member for 57 years. <clears throat> the first two meetings I attended, I was invited to participate in the topic session and I had to decline. I'm sorry, maybe next week. Oh, don't worry, that's okay. You don't have to speak if you don't want to next week. Took me two weeks to finally get up enough courage to stand up and participate in a topic session. Well, ever since then, when I joined, I'm the worst enemy of the timekeeper because, hey, enough. You talked enough, that's enough, you know? So they can't shut me up. 
but it's been a nice experience. And now with this famous pandemic, I've joined four other clubs, one in Oregon, one in Vancouver, one in Ireland, strictly for golfers, Columbia University in New York, which is one of the most outstanding clubs in Toastmasters, was rated as number 11 before the pandemic. And it's been quite an experience. So it's been a long trip. I've enjoyed every month. I even went to the extreme of marrying a Toastmaster. Mr. Toastmaster, back to you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, James. We appreciate it. Good luck to you. And I'd like to ask Alejandro to, um, James, please put yourself on mute. Alejandro, please unmute yourself and then tell us what club you represent and tell us something about your favorite quote. Uh, I represent uh, a club that is located, well, it's, it's in Chile and it's called After Office. It sounds like happy hour to me, but it's After sure. Office, okay? Um, now, let me tell you that my quote is actually my own motto, which is don't judge and learn from others. And it's basically because I was prepared to judge. I come from a country where we are used to judging uh, because of my education, because of my family, because of my religion, because of the political system. You know, we have people who are good and people who are not very good. We have people who are intelligent and people who are not very intelligent. We have people who are efficient and people who are not very efficient. And by identifying those who are, let's say, good, I thought that they were the model to be followed, you know, but I have realized that I miss so much when I don't get to know those who are not part of the model. So I decided to stop judging, which is part of my learning because it's not something I have already, you know, managed, but uh, I am learning how to manage this idea of not judging. So whenever someone says, ah, this is my ideology, if it's not mine, I say, oh, tell me more about it. I want to hear more about it, okay? Because I can learn from you. And mind you, you can't imagine how much, you know, I've been learning from people I wouldn't have dared to meet earlier in my life. So I've been learning from other religions, from different political movements, from different, you know, uh, people from different ages. So this is why my, my main motive, which is actually mine, is don't judge and learn from others. And my participation in, in this club is basically this idea of sharing, having fun and enjoying life. And that's me, thank you. Fantastic, thank you so much. And good luck to you, Alejandro. Each one of the six of you will be receiving a certificate of um, participation. Again, we really appreciate you stepping up and joining us by winning the contest from your club, representing each of your clubs here. So it's um, really wonderful that, that you're able to participate in this contest. And as we've heard throughout today's contest, that you learn by doing, but you also learn by watching other people. And you learn by watching what other people do. And you can learn some techniques, maybe how they handle table topics, maybe how they dealt with a question that came out of the blue. So you learn some strategies sometimes just by participating in or as a guest. I'd like to find out if our chief judge, Maria, is in the room. Maria, are you in the room? Nice, Monica, I'm here. Oh, Monica, sorry about that. Monica, you're here. So I have a question. Were there any disqualifications? No, everything is okay. There is no disqualified by time. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Monica. And now what I'd like to do is get some help from uh, Maria. Do we have, or from, uh, keep on saying Maria, it's Margarita. Do we have the first, second, and third place finishers? Just give me one or two minutes. Oh, take your time. Trust me, we'll be able to, to fill the time. Again, as we mentioned earlier, this takes a lot of effort and a lot of work. And I really want to congratulate the team that put this together. I've been involved in over a dozen different contests throughout the US and many other places. And this is one of the most well-organized. It's, it's incredible what you guys have done. You've created a system here 
where someone can step in the role and they can just perform the role knowing that everyone else has done their part. So um, very professionally well done and um, a super, super job making it easy for someone to step in and take on a role. Contests are super important because it gives us a chance to see how we're doing and to learn from other people. And sometimes when you put yourself on the spot, you find out a lot about yourself as well. So it's a good opportunity uh, to learn and to grow. And if you're not even a participant, I would encourage you to go to other contests and see what they're like. Contests follow the same format. We have rules from Toastmasters that tells us how to run a contest and what we need to do and the different roles that people take, just as you have a role in your weekly meetings or biweekly meetings, the same is true in the contest. And as everyone fulfills their roles, the contest goes on smoothly. I know it's an exciting time for the contestants right now trying to determine um, uh, what's going to happen, who will be taking um, first place, second place, and third place. When we announce it, we're going to start with the third place finisher. We'll announce the third place, the second place, and then the first place. All of the contestants, please do not try to find out who the judges are or try to ask any questions. All of the conclusions from this contest are final and um, we do not give evaluations out. We do not give feedback on what you did well or what you can improve. Um, it's different than our regular meeting. Um, we don't get that type of evaluation and feedback in a contest. But yep, this has been an exciting meeting. I think they're just doing those final tabulations, double checking the numbers to make sure that we identify the people in the proper order. And I also wanna say how very cool that they created these backgrounds for us. Again, those are the little things that make this contest so much more professional than the other ones. Sometimes, you know, you look at someone's background and sometimes it's nice and professional. And sometimes you see that they didn't clean up the room that they're sitting in. So, you know, it, it sort of takes away as you're, you're listening to them speak, so. Again, all those little things make this contest really top notch. And the one thing that I've said that I've said in my club before, I'm very, very impressed for especially the non-native speakers. To be able to give a speech, especially a table topic speech in a language that's not your native language. I mean, that is pretty incredible. Native English speakers, have trouble dealing with table topics questions. So when it's in a foreign language, I am really blown out of the water. I just think you guys um, have a really high level of English and you're doing whatever you can to, to keep it at its best by practicing and enhancing it with skills that you learn table topics and then Toastmasters. I think it's time. Um, yeah, Julia, I'm ready. I'm going to show you the uh, the first day of the participation, right? And then to the Correct. third, to the okay. Oh, oh, um, oh! We have a problem here. <laughs> that's okay. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, okay, uh, maybe I'm going to uh, help you because this is in Spanish and these have to be. Yeah, in, what if you can take uh, it, I, I, that would be great. Okay, and so I'm going, I'm, I'm going to read it, yeah? Yes. Okay. Entonces, dice, concurso de improvisados, afilar la sierra, certificado de participación a uh, James Pl Plunkett. Ay, sorry por la E. Eh, eh, otorgado por la Mesa de Líderes de Toastmaster Latinoamérica, Distrito U, fecha 3 de diciembre de 2022, presentador Billy Ameca. 
Este es el certificado de participación que van a recibir todos. This is the certificate that every, every one of you are going to receive. And now we are going for the third place. Please be the drums. <laughs> okay, the third place is for Barbara Rojas. Concurso de improvisados, afilar la sierra, third place to Barbara Rojas for Mesa de Líderes Toastmaster Latin America Distrito U. Fecha 3 de diciembre del 2022. Y presentador Billy Ameca. Okay, now the second place. The second place is for James Plunkett. Concurso de improvisados, afilar la sierra. Otorga el segundo lugar a James W. Plunkett por la Mesa de Líderes Toastmaster Latin America Distrito U. Fecha 3 de diciembre de 2022. Presentador Billy Ameca. And now the first, okay, I don't know if you have one minute to know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, now is David Ross, congratulations. Concurso de Improvisados Contest. Afilar la Sierra, primer lugar a David Ross, Mesa de Líderes Toastmaster Latin America Distrito U con fecha 3 de diciembre del 2022 y presentador Billy Ameja. Ah, cuando se los haga llegar, se los haré llegar en inglés. Please forgive me, I'm going to translate this certificate and I'm going to uh, bring to you in English. Now you are the winners. Fantastic. And I'm going to ask our uh, grand prize winner, David, just to take himself off mute and just say maybe a word or two of um, uh, how he's doing. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> well, thank you to everyone who participated. I really think this was definitely a well-organized table topics contest. Hats off to the judges and everyone who put it together. And I really appreciate the, uh, the recognition. Um, for me, I just, I guess I was reading summaries about the seven habits of highly effective people. And it just kind of put me in a different state of mind so when I answered the question, I was thinking about those things. I think it's a really good book if you're able to listen to it, or even if you just look at, if you listen to the summary on YouTube, I think it's a really good book. And yeah, it was fun uh, participating. I'm glad to represent my club, Toastmasters Bogota English Club. And um, if, if anyone would like to join some of our meetings, we meet on Tuesdays. Uh, virtually, so you can certainly join us if you have time. You can also use the meeting as an opportunity to improve your English if you wish, because the Tuesday meetings are in English. But thank you to everyone, and thank you for the recognition. Excellent. Thank you, David. Please put yourself back on mute. And congratulations to all the contestants. You are all winners. Again, you guys did a great job. I am very impressed with, with everyone. I'd like to ask Margarita to take herself off of mute and to give us some final words. Okay. Well, everyone, uh, I I don't know how to say. Uh, uh, I'm I'm I'm, th I'm talking with. Um, I don't know with uh, Nadeas. And I, I, I asked him, I don't know how to say at the end. <laughs> but I, I only want to say that I feel so touched because everybody did the best and, and everybody be, I, I can see that every one of you was so happy in all the contest and that brings to me happiness because is that all my effort and the effort of all of you guys is worthly. So thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy all the experience. And I I hope you guys uh, that you participate in, in, in events, future events. I don't know if that's okay. And thank you all. I'm so glad that you all are here and I don't know, enjoy it. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you, Margarita, for all of your hard work. Everyone, before we finally end, what I want you to do is to think of something that makes you smile because we're going to take a group photo. So Zoom Master, please get ready to do a, a screenshot and everyone think of something wonderful. Think of one of the great speeches you heard tonight. 
think of a family member who said something wonderful to you. Put on that big smile so that we can capture this moment together. Excellent. Cool. We have two screens in this moment, so we are going to the first screen. And now everybody wants to be happy in three, two, one. Okay, we have the first one. Just wait a minute. Please open your cameras. I want yes, to see please. You. Smiling faces. Samuel, Henry, Gerardo, Julian, Christian, open your cameras. Oh yes, we have in the second in this second screen we have a lot of people that have to your camera off. So Diana, Samuel, Cristobal. Juan, Cristian, Gerardo, Ana Mari. Okay. Okay, we're going to the second screen. I'm going to count down again. Three, two, one. Excellent. I have a rule. Uh, I have to see myself first, and if I'm okay, you're okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have the two photos Fair. now. Thank Fair you, Billy. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. Hopefully, you enjoyed the afternoon, evening, and congratulations to all of our contestants. You are all winners. And again, kudos to the team that put this together. You guys are super professional. Enjoy yourselves. And for those of you that are hanging around, the next contest, the Spanish um, Table Topics contest, will be right after this. Is that correct, Margarita? Yes, after this. Fantastic. Cool. Right now. <laughs> this contest please, is officially over. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Please stay here. We are going to have um i don't know five minutes and uh, and we are we, we we follow with the second contest thank you everyone for being here and stay here please <laughs>